Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about breaking bad habits. Are you ready to understand what causes bad habits? Is there something you've been doing for years that you keep saying you will quit? Would you finally like to be able to let go of that thing you do that drives someone else nuts? Let's end our month focusing on hodgepodge. Are you ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join me on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as I teach you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life, get organized, and become more mindful. I'm an award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, and I destroy the box and examine clutter in all areas. Every episode, I'll give you take action steps that you can easily apply to your life. Come on, let's get started. This was inspired, one, because I thought Breaking Bad was an awesome show. One of my worst habits was drinking Diet Coke, which I lovingly refer to as diet crack. I think that stuff is evil. It's kind of a crutch for me. I went years without having it, would get back into the habit. I was drinking Dr. Zevia for a while, which is made with stevia, and it had the same effect as having sugar in my body. So something I found to replace diet crack didn't work for me. I also have a bad habit on too many snacky snacks. I'm doing better in general with my diet, and I've added weightlifting to the advice of doctors, but I really have a bad habit of having that afternoon snacky snack. First thing I'd go to in the morning was to have a Diet Coke. I didn't drink coffee. I thought, well, that's probably better than that, and it's a habit I got into as a young child, a teenager, not wanting to gain weight, and so it's something I, with, I've struggled with for years. What causes bad habits? Bad habits don't come out of nowhere. Most of the time, bad habits are a way to deal with stress and boredom. Biting nails like many do, or wasting hours on social media, or over shopping. We only do something if we get some sort of benefit from it. Doing our bad habits eases our stress or distracts us from a problem. Most of the time, we don't get to the underlying reasons of why we continue our bad habits. It's been my experience that we have to get to the root of something before we can change it. This means there may be other issues of abuse, poverty, and unemployment, so you need to take that into consideration and take those challenges into consideration when trying to break a bad habit. I feel like the heroin drug epidemic is a great example of this. Some people are stressed or bored and they try heroin. It can be an escape from abuse or poverty. Until we clear out the clutter underneath and address those issues, in my honest opinion, the drug problem will only continue. We also don't like to be judged, so we rationalize our bad habit. Well, it was only one pint of Ben and Jerry's. Sorry, guys, we're probably going to be talking and using ice cream and food a lot. I haven't had any sugar since June 20th or caffeine or bread, so I might be fixating a little more on this than usual. My goal is to go three months without sugar of any kind. Become aware of your bad habit. First, there's a cue or trigger that tells your brain to go into automatic mode and let a behavior unfold. Then the routine of your behavior becomes automated. You know, I talk a lot about being on autopilot. That's what's going on with bad habits. Become more aware of your bad habit. Here are some questions to ask. When does it happen? How often? Where are you? Who are you with? What triggers the behavior? I watched a documentary a few days ago on the heroin habit in North Carolina. Many of the people talked about how when they fell back in with the crowd they were doing drugs with, they easily slipped back into that bad habit. How do we change our bad habit? 
the take action part. Most people agree the best thing to do is to replace a bad habit with a good habit. Have a plan in place when boredom or stress hits. If you are trying to quit smoking, have mints or gum to reach for instead of a cigarette. If you are procrastinating on writing, for example, spend five minutes writing. Put a timer to help you get through it and know that you can quit when you're done. If you bite your nails, learn how to practice something like EFT instead. Are you surrounded by clutter? Are you exhausted from the stress your clutter creates? Are you anxious every time you walk into your home? Do you long for peace of mind? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how I can support you. Get your triggers out of the way. I eat it if it's in the house. I simply don't bring it in. Your environment makes your bad habit easier and good habits more challenging. Don't forget the and. I'm really going to be doing a podcast on this soon. I feel really passionate about the and because that's been a huge part of my spiritual learning in the past couple years. I am overweight right now and I could lose four pounds in a month. Accept where you are and know you can change. Have a partner or two in crime. Support can really be crucial when releasing the bad habit and implementing a good one. Find people who inspire you and how you want to change your habit. Visualize succeeding. Mind over matter. Our minds are incredibly powerful. Harness that power to help you release your bad habit. Write it down so you can really see it and the steps you need to take. Find yourself. I know a lot of people who have a swear jar and every time they swear, they got to put in a dollar. Go slow and make teeny changes one step at a time. Becoming overwhelmed and biting off more than you can chew will not help you. I'm also going to be saying bye-bye to dairy. I couldn't do that with giving up the Diet Coke and the sugar and the bread. It would have been too much. Plan for when you slip up. We all fail. And I'm putting fail in quotation marks because I don't like that word and I don't believe it. We learn from it. We're not perfect. We can become better. We all mess up. What is your plan for when it happens? When you eat the pint of Ben and Jerry's chubby hubby, do you beat yourself up or do you go take a walk and go to the store so you have a salad for lunch tomorrow? Suggestions from science. I found an article from CNBC in January and here were some scientifically proven suggestions. They back up what I've just previously mentioned. Your amount of willpower depends on your thinking about willpower. If you think there is no limit to the amount of willpower you have, then there isn't. You can turn yourself into Rocky by convincing yourself that self-control works. It's that mind over matter thing again. Becoming very mindful about what you are doing and why you are doing it, you can interrupt the existing feedback loop that keeps a bad habit going. By digging into the experience of our bad habits, we are more likely to understand why they are bad for us and become less interested in acting on them. Curiosity gets us out of our fear-based knee-jerk habit patterns. Saying I don't is empowering and suggests a self-imposed decision. Using I can't, on the contrary, suggests being constrained by external forces. My brother does not allow his children to say, I can't, which I think has been a wonderful thing that he's done. Ever since they're little, they aren't allowed to say, I can't. Using, I don't want one, when refusing desserts, makes you more successful in the long-term resisting temptation.
I've seen a lot of variations on how long it takes to break a bad habit. The minimum seems to be 21 days, and some say it takes at least 66 or so days to form a good one. Be prepared to put some time in to change your bad habit. Take actions from today's podcast. What bad habit do you want to release? Become aware of your bad habit. The when, who, where, what, and how. Pick a few of the suggestions I've mentioned to flip your bad habit into a good habit. Record your progress to keep track of yourself and mark how far you've come. Next month, we'll be talking about fall. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you would rate and review the show because it really helps us in the search ranking. See you next Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Remember, when you clear your clutter, you can create the life you desire. Thank you.